This podcast is brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. From heating our homes and powering our vehicles to cell phones, clothing, and medical equipment, oil and natural gas makes everyday life better. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Learn more at ndpetroleumfoundation.org. Welcome to Plain Talk. This is Rob Port. I am with me is uh, Jeff Zarling. Now, he is the co-chairman of a new initiated measure campaign, which is to say they're going to be collecting signatures to put a proposed change to North Dakota's state constitution on the ballot. And what this constitutional amendment deals with is, well, the, the process by which we amend the state constitution through the initiated measure process. Currently, there's there's really no distinction in the law for the process that amends state statute and the process that amends the Constitution, other than constitutional ballot measures require more signatures to put them on the ballot. But after that, there's no real difference at all. And I don't know, I guess I think there should be, because the Constitution is a much different set of laws than statute. Constitutions are about broad ideas. They're about protecting our rights, our right to free speech, our right to the Second Amendment, our right to due process, our right to have an attorney. That's what constitutions are about. Statutes are about all the little, all the little things like uh, you, you shouldn't, uh, you can't play your radio too loud at three o'clock in the morning. Stuff like that. That's not for the Constitution. That's for the statute. And so, what this group is setting out to do, and they are calling themselves. Uh, protect North Dakota's constitution. What they're setting out to do is make a very small change to the state constitution. I can show you the text here in a moment. It's it's that simple. I could put it all on your screen at the same time. Uh, they're making a change to the state constitution uh, to essentially require a supermajority if you want to amend the state constitution, which means you got to have at least 60% of the vote and, as opposed to just a 50%, 50 plus one uh, majority. You have to have a 60% majority and also and this is a very important change as well ballot measures can only have one subject so you can't lump a whole bunch of things together put them all in one measure and amend the state constitution in a bunch of different ways on one vote they do that in congress they do that in legislatures all the time where they take a bunch of they, they create these christmas tree bills and they have a bunch of stuff all at once it sucks when they do it in legislatures we shouldn't be doing it at the ballot box uh, anyway, here to join me is one of the co-chairmen of the initiated measure campaign, this new measure campaign, Protect North Dakota's Constitution, J uh, Jeff Zarling. And if I can I do the tra transition right, there we go. There's Jeff Zarling. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing uh, very well. So tell us about your measure. I introduced it. Did I get anything wrong there? I think that was a pretty good summary. Yeah, I we, this is something that I think has been a growing concern for people in North Dakota for quite a few years now. I mean, if you look at the last 10 years or 12 or so, every election cycle, there has been an initiated constitutional measure on the ballot. And it seems like that's pretty frequent. I mean, if you think about the U.S. Constitution, how, how often have we amended the U.S. Constitution? In 250 years, it's what, 32, 30 some times. Last time was in the 80s or 90s. It's a rigorous process. It requires a supermajority in Congress. It requires ratification by the states. Modifying the Constitution, North Dakota requires a simple majority of 50% plus one. And we think that the North Dakota Constitution require, sh should have more respect than that. It, as you mentioned, it's the same process for an initiated measure to modify state statutes. So we just, we believe it requires a little more rigor and that if it's important enough to put in the constitution, 60% of North Dakotans should agree with that. And so that's what we're proposing. Uh, that was one of the quotes, I'm just reading our, our article by reporter Jeremy Turley uh, from inforum.com. Um, one of the quotes from your co-chairman uh, retired North Dakota Adjutant General uh, Mike Haugen, he said, I quote, in North Dakota, we have almost trivialized our constitution by allowing it to be modified with only 50% plus one vote. Um, now, there are ways in which the state constitution, and by the way, while we're talking here, I'm going to put the actual text of the amendment 
uh, on your screen um, so that you can check it out. But, uh, you know, I, I think that's a really good point. There are ways, again, I mentioned earlier, if, if, you, if you're collecting signatures to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot, you got to collect more than you would for a statutory measure. And I, I, I was thinking, uh, I think Secretary of State Al Jagger was saying that, that by the time we get done with this next census, because the number of signatures you have to collect is based on the state population, by the time we get through this next census, it's going to be around 30,000 signatures to get uh, a constitutional amendment on the statewide ballot. Um, so, you know, there are some differences. Also, um, the legislature can amend, can amend statute without it going to a vote for the people. But if the legislature wants to amend the constitution, that has to be a resolution that, that goes to the people of the state of North Dakota. So, um, there are ways in which amending the constitution is different, but your argument would be, that's not enough. It shouldn't just be a simple majority. Yeah, that's that's our position. And so just to clarify, this would apply to both initiated measures and referred legislative measures that end up on the ballot. It right. would require 60 percent. Sure. Oh, OK. Um, oh, and and, and what, what you're saying is if, if the legislature tries to amend the Constitution, those amendments would also have to get 60 percent of the vote. That's correct. Yep. So we're actually not changing anything about the process on how you get it on the number of signatures or that. I mean, we are asking for clarification in a single issue. I think that's important so that it's clear to the voters. So there's no confusion. Uh, but the threshold is 60 percent. And when you, what's interesting um, is when we talk to citizens and, and residents of North Dakota about this issue, uh, you know, we just explain to them the difference between the Constitution and, and statute. Some understand that some aren't as familiar with the legislative process. But when they understand it's a simple majority to modify the Constitution, they're surprised by that, actually, and a little bit appalled. So a question at the press conference today was, how long did it take you to, to get the sponsoring committee and so forth? We just started working on that in January. And to get 25 sponsors, we actually have 41. As uh, General Haugen uh, mentioned earlier, it was easy. People are passionate about this and they're concerned about their constitution being under attack. And, and I think that's what people are expressing. Um, and I think this is probably long overdue and people are ready to see this change. Give us one thing that, that I've noticed about initiated measure campaigns is you can make philosophical arguments for a lot of them, but when you're trying to persuade voters, what they want to hear is what's the real world implications? What's the real world problem that we're trying to solve that, that should, should convince me to vote yes? So give me some, some real world examples. And I'm, I'm looking just, just for the sake, I, I went and looked up. Over the last decade, we've had 20 constitutional amendments um, put on the ballot, either by the legislature or by petitioners, um, of those 12 passed over the last decade. Um, so that's kind of our track record. Um, I, I, th I think there's an attitude among North Dakota voters, and I think it's a very healthy attitude. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So if you want me to fix it, show me where it's broken. Make that case. Well, I think um, like some of the people mentioned today when they shared their perspective is um, they feel like our state constitution is kind of under attack, right? And that we are always, you know, playing defense and having to defend our constitution against some of these outside interests or, or different interest groups um, that, that aren't necessarily looking for what's in the best interests of North Dakotans. So as you know, we look at, you can look at those past measures and, and take them individually and whether you like them or not, we're not passing judgment on any of those particular measures. What we're saying is if they're really a good idea, then 60% of North Dakotans should agree. And if you reach that threshold, then you probably have a good idea that that is meaningful to the citizens of North Dakota. That's really our position. One thing I like, too, is it may encourage some of these people who are going to put an issue on the ballot to look at putting it in statute in, instead of the Constitution. Because I, I think some of these amendments we've passed and now we're putting law, 
in the state constitution that's really not constitutional law, it's statutory law. And that's agnostic as to whether or not you like it, right? It's, it's agnostic as to whether you think recreational marijuana is a good idea or a bad idea. Or that was a statutory measure. That's a bad. That's a bad example. Um, Marzi's law. If, if you if you like Marzi's law or you don't like Marzi's law, I, I think it's a valid thing to say. Well, this this didn't need to be in the Constitution. You know, this could have been in statute, and we could have been just fine. Um, I, I think there's an argument to be made there. Let's let's make sure we're picking the proper lane for some of these proposals. And I I think as people look at this, that's that's one of the things they're seeing is. Um, hopefully it will uh, direct things towards state statute that makes sense to be in state statute. And, and, you know, frankly, when we, you know, if you think about how laws are made, right, we're, we're a republic, we're a representative government. You know, if I have a concern about something, I can go to my local representative and senator. I can go to Brad Beckadall or Pat Hattelstead or David Richter, and I can, and, introduce them to an issue I'm passionate about or that I think needs to be fixed. And then there, as our representatives, they go to the legislature and they work on resolving these issues. That That's what representative government is. Um, so when we looked at this, we thought, actually, should we take this and go through that process and demonstrate and exemplify that process? So that was a consideration for this. But what happens is, because it is constitutional, it would be then a referred measure out of legislature to the ballot, which is is seen from the public as being the legislature is forcing this, and it, it's a power grab, and that's what they're always accused of. So we believe that this is, you know, th- and so you have that option. You can either have it through representation or this is the citizen option that was introduced in what, 1918, 1916, something like that. And it, so, so we do have this option and we believe that this is a way for the citizens of North Dakota to take this issue and say, this is important to us. This is a process option for us. And so we're going to bring it forward. And, and we've been asked, well, you only have to get 50 percent well i can't change it to 60 to apply the rules to of the game are what they process. are right now right so we're going to play within those but we're we're shooting for much greater than 60 percent uh, approval on this measure we believe north dakotans in large majority are going to support this idea of protecting our constitution it, it's in you the, the name of your group is protect north dakota's constitution you mentioned earlier in this interview that in a lot of ways you feel like our constitution's under attack and I've, I felt that way, too. And, and in some ways, I mean, some of the arguments are, are not really addressed by this measure. But if, if you look at it, like we talk about the signature requirement. It's different for constitutional measures than it is for statutory measures. Constitutional measures have to get about twice uh, the number of signatures that, ballot, that, that statutory measures do. I think one of the reasons why so many we've had we've seen so many constitutional amendments in recent years, like I said, we've seen what was the number again? 20? Yeah, 20 measures over the last decade. I I think one of the reasons why is a lot of the groups pushing those measures are are not the sort of committees or the sort of campaigns that we traditionally think of when you think of a citizen-initiated measure. I mean, normally you think of volunteer people who go out and they're going door-to-door and they're convincing their neighbors and they're down at the local post office or something collecting signatures and that's not really what's been happening. I, at one time, I did the math, and there's well over a million dollars has been paid to one company um, that, that basically specializes in collecting signatures for measures. So if you're a group that has deep pockets, you can come into the state of North Dakota, and that signature limit is nothing, right? I mean, it's it's hardly an obstacle at all. You put some money down on the table, you hire some people, they go out and collect your signatures for you. Now you're right back on even footing. All you need is 50 plus one at the ballot box. And if you got a bunch of money, you know, you can you can run ads and, and do all sorts of stuff and drown out the opposition. And that's some of that's a probably a topic for a whole different show. But to this point, I, I think I think this brings back sort of an equalizer and makes the difference distinct again because the signatures aren't an obstacle anymore not in a day and age where somebody can plunk down 150 200,000 300,000 dollars and just basically buy that signature collection this puts it back the way it should be where passing a constitutional amendment is harder 
Right. And, and yes, to your point, and we truly believe this will be a grassroots effort that is going to swell and grow. Um, I'll refer back to General Haugen's comment earlier today. It, it was easy recruit. I mean, we, we needed 25 sponsors. We have 41. And the, the appetite for this is significant. People, it's simple. People understand it. They understand the effect the the intent in the effectiveness of it so we think people are going to that people want to get behind it and and just just to uh, address that i to be upfront we we will use a combination of organic and paid signature gatherers um because of the threshold is going to be about 30 as you mentioned 33 to you know 35,000 or more that we want to gather we're going to pursue this as a grassroots effort um we have presentations already scheduled next week. Our committee members are already communicating. We launched our website and Facebook page this morning. Our committee members are already uh, inviting uh, their networks to, to join the cause. And so this will be a grassroots effort, but we will uh, use paid signature gatherers to ensure that uh, we meet that threshold. But, but again, we, we want to demonstrate in the success of this and get over 60% approval at the ballot box. That's our goal. I'm, We're I'm, required to get 50, but we want 60 plus. I'm, I'm glad you're being transparent about the pigs. A lot of a lot of these organizations aren't. I'm glad you're being transparent that that's the way you're going about it. The, the, the signature number, that's an interesting point. I hadn't thought about that. I mean, I, I refer to the fact that obviously we have a new, a new census count that's going to be official soon. And uh, that's, like I said, our... Are the number of signatures required is based on the population. Now, currently, and I'm, I'm reading this, this is from the timeline for your measure that was just released by the Secretary of State's office today. Um, they're saying 26,904 prior to the 2020 census. Um, do, do you, I mean, how, does, how does that work? I mean, which which one are you, because this, the measure is, is obviously you guys are aiming at the 2021 ballot. Um, 20... 2022 or 2022 excuse me 2022 i mean so it's a ways out yeah i'm i don't know where that came from i'm reading 2020 here that's that's the problem sure. the 2020 census um but you know how, how does that work i mean which do, do you know how many signatures at this point you're gonna have to collect we we won't know that until the um 2020 census is certified which will most likely um be certified by the time we turn in our signatures because we we turn in our signatures I, I have that timeline that you're referring to so we're working off of those dates we just received this from the secretary of state today so so we we still need to digest this but yeah i mean we know that it's going to be closer to the required is going to be closer to 32 33 and our goal will be significantly higher than that to ensure that we uh, meet the threshold yeah you, so, always, you always want some more because every you know somebody somebody's handwriting wasn't legible or somebody didn't sure put the city down or something like that and 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 they get disqualified so um so that's going to be very interesting the other part of the measure that we really haven't discussed much is essentially the one subject per uh, per measure, and I have the text here. Um, it says the proposed. This is this is the text that's being added, and and actually, you know what? I'm going to put as I read this. I am going to uh, put the text of the amendment back on the screen. Um, the 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 language that you're adding to the Constitution is the proposed amendment. And by the way, if you're reading on the screen, it's the underlying portions. That's the text that gets added by this measure. The proposed amendment may not comprise more than one subject, and the Secretary of State may not approve the initiated the initiative petition for circulation if the proposed amendment comprises more than one subject. Tell us a little bit about why you thought that was necessary. Well. As this was a group of people that came together about six, seven months ago, uh, a number of, um, you know, organizations have had concerns about this. And so we brought together uh, a working group. And as we looked at it, we said, okay, we'll define the problem and we'll work through solutions. And so in that process of defining the problem, everybody has kind of their perspective of what they think the problem is. And then as we kind of define that, and then we looked at, okay, what are the proposed solutions and how do we work through that? We Do we define a, an exhaustive process to come up with ideas? You know, 
we had um, one committee that did some brainstorming, post-it notes, et cetera. Well, we actually engaged with a couple of people that served on the 2017 legislative study regarding this that, um, and the link is still out there. And so we reviewed that information. Uh, there was a comparative uh, presentation that uh, legislative council prepared for that committee. We reviewed, uh, there are some, I don't remember, 30, 40 bill drafts that that committee considered. Um, and we have two members of that committee that served on our working group. And uh, um, Jonathan Sickler, who is one of our um, sponsoring committee members, served on that interim uh, study committee. And so we felt like there was a great deal of information, a body of work that was exhaustive, that has already gone through this. And so we drew from that. We also did some, some uh, polling and some, um, uh, some, we had a, uh, there was a group that had some study work done. And so this is a very well-informed uh, solution, we believe. And part of that was um, evaluating a lot of the different things that came out of that about you know, do you require signature increases? Do you require it to be on the general and not, uh, you know, there's a lot of different considerations, right? Well, it came down to, we believe 60% and single issue gives it the rigor and the, the breadth that it needs. Now, single issue in that background work, um, there was comparative analysis done and there's apparently quite a bit of case law uh, on this throughout the country already. And I don't remember the number of states that have single issue. I know South Dakota is one of them. Um, and so- North, North Dakota has it for the legislature. Uh, the, the legislature's bills are not supposed to comprise more than one subject matter. I mean, so, so our lawmakers are already working under that law. Sure. So, so that, that's where that came from, um, was, was it was informed from that process of reviewing those materials, what were the possible solutions and what what do we think is going to be effective in achieving the goal of solving the problem of feeling like our constitution is under attack? And we believe, you know, again, this is a, this is a foundational, this is part of the constitution. We're talking about our foundational document. So we're not passing judgment on any type of topic or any particular resolution. This is structural. Yeah. This says, if it's that important to change the constitution, 60% of North Dakota residents should agree. We think that 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 solves itself. So, I mean, you, you require 60% to pass a school bond. It's, it's like somebody said, you know, why is adding a bathroom to a school more rigorous than modifying our constitution? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a, that's an excellent comparison. Um, the, the the one topic I mean that this came up last last measure and, and again I want to make it clear this this proposal isn't about whether you liked or you hated any past ballot initiative that's not what that this is about this isn't like we want to stick it to somebody who amended the constitution in the past not what this is about but the issue of more than one topic per measure came up last time and we ultimately didn't vote on it because the Supreme Court state Supreme Court um uh, removed the the measure from the ballot, uh, but there was a ballot measure last last cycle that dealt with um, voting. But it, it dealt with a lot of different things. It dealt with primaries. Uh, it instituted ranked choice voting on the statewide ballot. We would have jungle primaries, you know, where we're sort of removing the the political parties out of the process. Um, it, it it dealt with with overseas voting, right, for our deployed members of the military. It dealt with a lot of different things. But when redistricting, it was redistricting, right. It, it dealt with a lot of things and it, it, but it was, it, when it was circulated and a lot of people were upset about this and I wrote a lot about it, but when it was certain and, and your, your co-chair, by the way, general Mike, Hal Michael Haugen had, had a lot of things to say about it as well, because it was circulated under just telling people, oh, this is just about making it easier for deployed members of the military to vote, which not surprisingly is very popular with North Dakotans because you know what we want our, our deployed military members to vote. If they're having a problem, of course we want it to be easy for them to have their say. Left unsaid so, were, were all the other parts of the measure. So to me, and, and again, regardless of how you felt about that measure, I, I feel like what your amendment's trying to do is saying, 
no, if, if, if you want to make a change to the Constitution, it's got to be one at a time. So we're not we're not confusing people. The interesting thing about what you just said was in regards to the voting overseas servicemen. And you said, yes, our our citizens would believe if there is a problem that we should change that. That's the key sentence in what you just said, because as General Haugen has said before, if we're having a problem. When this came up, he said he he talked to a number of active servicemen and, and leadership, and he said, is there a problem of our uh, military servicemen not being able to vote? And I believe the answer to that was no. Yeah. It, we, we weren't having a problem. That was so the same thing. I had, I had at least of, that's what I had my understanding of, is. Yeah, I had a number of people write me from overseas saying, this is not a problem. <laughs> you know, I just voted yeah. in the last election from over here. It was easy as pie. Um, it was, it, I, I think I just stole the Secretary of State's uh, slogan for voting. But um, yeah, it was it was very easy. But I mean, that's that, that was a debate about that measure specifically. This addresses that. And I, I, think that's, I think that's important, especially with constitutional measures where your, you know, the Constitution should be about very broad things, right? Very broad rights and then and then the more narrow sort of lawmaking should happen uh in in state statute how how does that how do you envision that process working though because sometimes it's it's complicated where if you want to make a change you know the, the law that you're talking about changing might be mentioned in more than one you know for instance your measure um amends both article three and article four of the legislative branch now i obviously it's all the same topic because you're talking about constitutional member uh uh, measures and and it's mentioned twice in the Constitution because there's two ways you can amend the Constitution. One is in Article Three, which is powers reserved to the people. That's the initiated measure process, and the other is Article Four because the legislative branch can also initiate a constitutional measure. You need to make changes to the number of votes required in both of those places, so it's mentioned twice. But I mean, where where's the line? I mean, where uh, if if your language passes and it's in our constitution, how does that line get defined between something that's just has to amend all the different places in the constitution and something that might be considered more than one topic? Yeah, so that's a great question, right? So obviously, in our process, we had to consult with a constitutional attorney and have this drafted. Um, there's also uh, again, you can work with your local legislator. It, they they have the ability to bring forth concerns that you have. So you can work with the legislator. They can work with legislative council to draft uh, a bill. Um, so so there's precedent there for how you know we were able to look at those bill drafts from that study um, and and glean from that. As far as how that determination is made, I, th I think the Secretary, is char Secretary of State is charged with that. Uh, but uh, you know, the Attorney General's office provides service, uh, and and I think they would then do the interpretation and make that determination. Again, uh, there's plenty of case law across the country for reference of that. So so I think that that'll uh, be addressed. You said you said the other thing about this is you know, so it's clear to people. I think one. One of the considerations and one of the ideas that's been discussed in the past is having the full text of the measure on the ballot. And, and that, when it becomes very long, becomes an issue for some of the, the local, um, the counties to print that. There's costs associated. So that hasn't been uh, thought of as a successful way of getting it in front of the voter. Because a, a lot of voters, they see it for the first time when they're in the ballot box if they did, weren't exposed yeah. to it. And, so and what they're seeing there is not the text thing. of the measure. What they're seeing there is ballot language that, that obviously goes through an approval process with I, – I, it's the Secretary of State. I think the Attorney General's office is involved in that as well. But, I mean, that's that's someone's – and I, I mean, not to be critical of them, but that's kind of someone's opinion on what the summary of this thing ought to be. And there's always a lot of debate over what the ballot language should be. So we think that the single issue will help clear that up and clarify that, you know, as, as an alternative to um, putting the full text of the measure on the ballot, because that's kind of a non-starter from, um, what is it, the auditors uh, uh, group or, or the treasurer's county auditors group. They have concerns with that, and rightfully so. So I, I think single issue will will just really clear things up for the voter um, and, and give us good good law 
Well, Jeff, uh, that's um, I, I thank you so much for for being available, and obviously your press conference today. This is going to be a debate. This sucker ain't getting voted on until 2022. And by the way, are you are you aiming for the June ballot or the November ballot? So we 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 haven't determined what those dates are. You know, as as I said, we just got our timeline today from the Secretary of State. So that'll be something we'll need to evaluate. And you know, you can shoot for one thing, and then what you get for signatures can determine that as well. So uh, that decision hasn't been made or what we're able to do well it's, it's going to be a debate and I, I hope we have a fulsome debate on this because it's it's an important topic but it's not going to be till next year and we're still at the beginning of 2021 i guess we're getting to the middle of 2021 man time flies uh it was just not that long ago it was still january now it's april already but um it's going to be a, a good debate and i'm sure we'll be hearing more from you as this plays out but jeff thank you so much for your time thank you